All right, welcome to Unit 2, Exploring Two-Variable Data. Today we're going to look at Topic 2.2, Representing Two Categorical Variables. So for the next couple topics, we're going to focus only on representing two categorical variables. And this video is really more about just how can we visualize two categorical variables, that way we can make sense of all the data. Now remember, when you collect categorical variables, you're collecting words, and you need to somehow organize a mass of a bunch of words. So there are multiple ways to show two categorical variables. We could do side-by-side -side bar charts, side-by-side -side pie charts, or what are really good, but kind of tricky to make, but really beneficial, segmented bar graphs. All of these are ways that we could show one categorical variable broken down by categories of another categorical variable. Let me explain, and what we're gonna do, is we're gonna look at two categories. We're gonna look at gender and hair color. So those are the two categories that we're gonna kind of look at in this video. So we got gender and we got hair color. So, you know, if you were asked people their gender, you're gonna get a lot of males, a lot of females. If you're gonna ask people their hair color, you're gonna get a lot of brown, blonde, black, red, and so forth. So here are side-by-side -side bar charts. So what we notice is clear double bars, one for female, one for males. And we have those categories, female, male, broken down across the categories of hair color. So we see people with black hair. We see how many are girls, how many are boys. Blonde hair, girls, boys, brown, and red. This is a frequency bar chart. It shows the counts. So for example, we see that there are nine people with nine girls, females with black hair, and we can see there are more. There's 12 boys with black hair. So this is a really nice way to kind of break it down. And obviously we could talk about our data. We could say, well, hey, uh, the same proportion have brown hair. Same proportion, boys and girls, about the same. And we could talk about the fact that more boys have black hair than girls. More boys have blonde hair. But when it comes to red, um, very few people have red hair to begin with, but more girls have red hair. So it's a nice way to just kind of talk about your data and easily be able to see the two variables, one variable being gender across the second variable being hair color. Now, I mentioned segmented bar graphs. Here is what a segmented bar graph is. Now, these are based on relative proportions, right? So here what we did was we took all of the females, all of the females, 100% of the females, and then we broke the females down by the proportion that have red, brown, blonde, and black hair. Now, it would have made more sense if I used red for red hair, but whatever, this was just how the program I used made the colors. I didn't really have a choice over it. I could have changed them, but is what it is. So what we get a nice view of is that of the females, because remember this bar over here only represents the females. So I'm not even really thinking about males when I look at this bar right here. I'm thinking about only the females. And I see that a big chunk of females, a big proportion of females have brown, um, Hair, right? It's a, I can just clearly tell it's the biggest chunk. The smallest chunk is um, red hair, and then there's a pretty small chunk of blonde hair as well, and then a decent sized chunk for black hair. So it's a nice way that I could see the different hair colors across the category of female. And then this bar over here is for males, and now I'm only looking at all of the males, 100% of the males, and I could see the proportions that are built there. So the problem is like, you know, I'm never gonna have you make one of these, but they are very, very, very easy to make. All you gotta do is say, okay, of the females, maybe you got 80 females, I'm just kinda making that number up, and then you count how many of them have black hair, and then you take how many divided by 80, and that gives you the percentage, so that first, segment goes to whatever that percentage is. And then this next segment just builds off of that, right? So then to figure out blonde hair, you take your 80 females, you count how many have blonde hair, you put that number up here, and you divide, and then you just stack that proportion on top of the black proportion, okay? And then you just go from there. So they're actually pretty easy to make, they just take a little bit of time to do. But these allow us to really see what, what category hair color is comprised of the most, and then now we could also compare these two. Like we could see that for both males and females, brown hair is the biggest chunk, right? Um, red hair is the smallest chunk. So it allows us to really do a nice job of comparing these. Now, segmented bar graphs could always go either way. So this is a segmented bar graph broken down by gender, but here is a segmented bar graph of the same data broken down by hair color. So what we see are four bars 
for each color. So exam example, for the blonde hair people, 100% of the people with blonde hair are gonna be in the blonde hair category, right? All the blonde hair people are there. So of the blonde hair people, what proportion are male is shown in blue and what proportion are female is shown in red. So again, how do you, how did I create this, right? Well, let's just say there were 13 people with brown, uh, blonde hair. Well, what I did was I looked at what, and again, I just made that number up. I looked at what proportion of them, how many of them were males. And I divided that by 13. And that is the chunk that I made for the males. And then obviously the remaining chunk is for the females. So it's pretty easy to make these segmented bar graphs, even though they do take a little bit of time, but they really allow us to get a feel for comparing the data. So we could say, oh, wow, if you have red hair, you're much more likely to be a female. There's a bigger chunk of female there. If you have blonde hair, you're more likely to be a male. We see that there's a bigger chunk of males there. So these give us a really nice view of two categorical variables. All right, now another way that is a very, very typical way to represent, to show two categorical variables is a two-way table. This is a nice way to show the frequencies for one categorical variable across another. Now, frequencies just means counts. Now, some people also call these contingency tables. I usually just call them two-way tables, but you may see that word contingency tables. And, you know, this is really a great way to display counts of one categorical variable that makes it very easy to read and comprehend. So here is my two-way table. So simple. So in each cell is simply the counts for the people that meet those categories. So for example, there were nine people that I counted that were having black hair and were female. Uh, three were blonde and female, uh, 27 were male and brown, 27 were also female and brown, and so forth, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then I added these totals, right? You don't always see these totals. Most of the time, I'm nice and the AP test is nice, and they'll give you the totals, but sometimes they don't, but most of the time they do. And it's simply saying, all right, this column right here is for the total of people with black hair, obviously nine plus 12 is 21. The total of people with blonde hair, obviously that's gonna be eight, and so forth. And then we have the total of people with females, that's our row total, obviously it's a row. So 41 total females, 45 total males, and then the grand total, whether you add up the genders or add up the hair colors, you'll get the grand total of 86 total people. So pretty easy to understand. So if we go back to how I made those segmented bar charts, if we looked at the first one right here, the one that was broken down by gender, what I did was I said, okay, black hair, nine out of 41 females have black hair. So nine out of 41 is about 22%. It's about 0.22. So when I came over to here, my red section, which represents black hair, went up to 22% or 0.22. And then I moved on to blonde hair. So I said, okay, of the females, three have blonde hair. Out of 41 females, that's about 7%. So I took that 7% and stacked it right on top of the 22% that already had black hair. So again, pretty easy to make those charts. All right, now we could also slightly adjust a two-way table and we could look at one called a joint relative two-way table. Here, we simply look at frequencies across the board. So all we do is we divide every number by the total. So for example, 10%, about 10%, if I want to be more exact, 10.47% of the people in the survey were females and had black hair. So it's very specific, female and black hair. And that would represent about 10% of all the people. And then again, each number represents their proportion. So obviously down here in the grand total, 100% of total people, that is down here, right? So that's my grand total, 100% right here. And then if I took the 41 females divided by 86, I would get that about 47, 48% were females. Take the 45 out of 86 that were males, and that's how I got this number, about 52%. So you literally are going back to our two-way table, taking every single number and dividing it by the grand total of 86. All that does is it gives you a view of the proportions of each individual cell and how they compare to the total. Um, that's called a joint relative frequency. 
Now, the last thing we could do is make a very, very specific type of two-way table called a relative contingency frequency table. I know it's kind of a mouthful, but this is actually very easy to understand. All it does is it focuses on the proportions out of each hair color. So this one focuses on hair color, right? So this says, okay, let's just look at people with black hair. So obviously, you know, if I take, you know, if I go back to this table up here, 21 people have black hair. So 21 out of 21 are going to be 100% of people with black hair have black hair. I mean, just think about that for a second. 100% of people with black hair have black hair. Then we break it down by gender. That's introducing the second variable. So we say, okay, of the people with black hair, of the 21 people with black hair, how many of them were female? And we could go back to our two-way table and say there's nine of them. So nine out of 21 is where I'm getting the 42.86% or the 0.4286. So again, that was simply the nine out of 21. And then for the female or for the males, if you remember, there were 12 males who had black hair. Divide them by 21, and that's where I got the 0.5714. So basically, I'm looking at this by column. So each column gets kind of broken down in of itself. So you said, okay, if you got blonde hair, you have a 100% chance of having blonde hair because you have blonde hair. And then of those people with blonde hair, what percent are female? What percent are male? And so forth, right? So um, this is what we call, this is like our segmented bar graph, essentially, right? If you go all the way back to here, this was our segmented bar graph where we looked at each individual hair color and broke that hair color down by what proportion are female, what proportion are male. So that's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm looking at each individual hair color, breaking it down by what proportion are male, what proportion are female. The nice one to look at is brown because exactly 50% of the brown hair people were female and male. And we could go and see that. If we look at the bar right here for brown, we can literally see 50-50. So again, multiple different ways to display two categorical variables. And I hesitate, I pause there because I really want to make sure you understand that this is only for categorical variables. We're dealing with words. Yes, in a two-way table, you see numbers. That doesn't make it quantitative. The numbers just represent the counts of people that met that criteria, right? So three people were both labeled blonde and labeled female. That's not a quantitative variable. I'm either female or I'm male, I'm blonde or I'm not blonde, but that's just a count of how many people met that. So two-way tables, we're going to work with a lot this year. In fact, we're actually going to see them a lot right now. And we're going to see them a lot again towards the end of the year. But they really are important to understand, and they're very, very easy. Now, please don't let all these proportions and stuff trick you. I get a lot of kids that get confused. They're not meant to be confusing. It's just a different way of looking at the numbers. Are we going to look at what proportion of people have black hair and are female, so just divide by the total, or in a contingency frequency table, we just look more specifically, okay, let's look at only the people that have red hair, right? It was this very small group, but if you have red hair, you 100% chance have red hair, and then we break it down by gender. So pretty simple, pretty easy, um, but we're gonna use these tables, again, the next couple topics, to really emphasize how we could start to compare and understand relationships that we see in categorical data.